This lesson deals with OPM circuit analysis. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 4, starting on page 33. There are many OPM circuits that use non inverting, inverting, and differential amplifiers. If you're trying to analyze one of these circuits, all you would need to do is to substitute the model that we've developed and you've reduced your circuit to one that just contains dependent sources and you can use then the methods that we've talked about in chapter 4. But suppose your circuit doesn't contain one of these substructures. What do we do in terms of analyzing the circuit? We've used node voltages and mesh currents to analyze our circuits previously, and the same would apply here. But sometimes it's hard to identify the meshes because of that triangle symbol for the op-amp. Let's develop a strategy for writing node voltages. First thing I do is identify all the nodes in your circuit. Determine how many of those are unknown given the fact that you can label the no voltage, no current, and you also have a known input. We need to sum the currents at nodes in our circuit so that we can get constraints on our node voltages. We don't want to write Kirchhoff's current law at a node that has a voltage source, independent or dependent, because that's going to give us another unknown. Let's try this on an example. This op amp circuit with four resistors and one input is called a bridge T amplifier. Now this may look like an inverting amplifier, but what I've got here is this node. And in our model, there is no such node. So we have to go back to analyzing this just using Kirchhoff's voltage law and current law. Let's solve for V out in terms of V1, and let's evaluate our resulting gain equation with these values of resistances. And then we'll develop a model for the circuit. Our first step is to identify the nodes in our circuit. So there's a node here, a node here, a node here, and a node here. And of course there's a ground node. So I've got one, two, three, four node voltages. But I do know the voltage across here because of the feedback is driven to zero also that this current is equal to zero, and likewise so is this one. So I really only have two unknown node voltages, V3 and V4. Now where should I sum the currents? Don't want to do it here because I pick up another unknown. Don't want to do it here because again I pick up another unknown. There is a voltage source back to ground here, and obviously there's one back to ground here. All right, so let's sum the currents at node two. Assign current I1, I2, I3, and I4, assuming that current comes out of V1 but you could pick it in any direction. And once you pick it, then you solve for the difference of the node voltages based on that direction. You get the same answer no matter how you pick those. The current I want is just simply this node voltage minus this node voltage divided by R1. But this is V1 and this is zero. And so V1 divided by R1 is equal to I1. Now there's no current in here, so that's also the value of I2. But I2 is the difference of these two voltages divided by R2. So it's zero minus V3 divided by R2. I'll sum the currents at this node. We have one equation in our two unknowns, which is V3 and V4, but only V3 is showing up so far. I need one more equation. Let's sum the currents here. The current that enters is zero minus V3 over R2. The current that leaves is V3 over R3. And then the current leaving in this direction is V3 minus V4, which is V out, divided by R4. And that's this expression right over here. Let's put V out on your side of the equation. So it'd be a plus V out over R4. And let's bring this on this side of the equation. So I've got everything multiplying V3 here. 1 over R2, 1 over R3, and 1 over R4. Let's substitute in the value for V3 here. This is my value of V3 based on our first equation. Divide by V1 now, so I've got my transfer function. And I'll, I'll cross multiply by R4. And this is my result now. I've got R2 over R1 times R4, and then I got this reciprocal relationship. And normally you would just stop here. This is the answer to the gain of this circuit, but let's see if we could factor this into a formula that might be a little bit easier to remember. Let's find a common denominator here of R2, R3. So I'll multiply this by R3, multiply this by R2, and I can add those two together, and I've got R4 here. I'm gonna multiply this through here. So I'm going to get a 1 from this, and I'll get R4 times this. And this is really the reciprocal of R2 in parallel with R3. You don't have to memorize this formula, but it isn't that hard to construct a little memory trick for remembering what the gain equation is here. Let's go back and look at the schematic. So here's V out given V1. And our gain equation was minus R2 over R1 times the quantity 1 plus R4 divided by R2 in parallel with R3. So it's a way to look at the circuit and maybe have a rough memory trick as to how to put this together. It looks like an inverting amplifier relationship. And then I've got a one plus this divided into this. You can think of this as kind of like a virtual short circuit where I've got zero volts here, but I don't have any current. 
and would look like as if r2 is in parallel with r3. Let's evaluate our gain equation. Suppose that r1 is 1 megohm, r2 is 1 megohm, r3 is 1k, and r4 is 100k. Then we have r2 over r1, 1 plus r4 over r2 in parallel with r3. So this ratio is 1, and then 1 meg in parallel with 1k is about 1k. So I'm getting a gain of about a minus 101. Let's see if we can develop a model for this circuit. The voltage V1 in the bridge T amplifier is hooked up to the resistor R1. That goes to the minus terminal of the op amp. So all of V1 is across R1. The current that's going to flow is V1 divided by R1. I can get that same effect by putting a resistor here of R1, in this case 1 million ohms. The gain of this amplifier was a minus 101. And I could use a voltage controlled voltage source with a minus sign here on top and the plus grounded to create that effect. Because I have a voltage controlled voltage source, I have no Thevenin resistance. Now, given the values that I've plugged in here, I could also get the same equivalent circuit if I just used an inverting amplifier. But to get this high of an input resistance, in other words, 1 million ohms, I would have to pick the feedback resistor to be 101 mega ohms. That's possible, but there's some other issues to consider when you do that. Noise in a circuit depends on a lot of factors, one of which is the resistance value. And the noise in a circuit goes up as the square root of the resistance. And once you get above a couple of mega ohms, that becomes significant. I wouldn't want to use a feedback resistor that large. If I did, I'd have a lot more noise in my circuit. And so I'm able to achieve high gain with a high input resistance. And these are some analysis techniques for op-amp circuits.